Hi everyone, welcome back to Civil Engineering with Amir. This is Amir here with another video on the topic of shear force and bending moment. In this example, which is selected from Craig's Mechanics of Materials, we have a cantilever beam with a total length of 10 feet, and we want to determine expressions for the shear force and bending moment over the length of this beam. So a fixed support is located at point C or the right end of the beam, we have a downward point load with a magnitude of 1 kilopounds at point A or the left end of the beam, a clockwise moment with a magnitude of 5 kilopounds foot, which is applied at a distance 4 feet from the left end or point B, and finally, an increasing triangular load with a maximum magnitude of 2 kilopounds per foot, which is applied to the beam from point B to point C. All right, let's start solving the question. Similar to the previous examples that we solved on this topic, we're going to start solving this question by drawing the free body diagram of the beam. So if this is our beam, this is point A, this is point B, and this is point C. This is 4 feet, this is 6 feet. We have a downward point load here. The magnitude is 1 kilopounds. We have a clockwise moment here. The magnitude is 5 kip foot. We have a triangular load with the maximum magnitude of 2 kilopounds per foot. And finally, at point C, we have a fixed support. So we're going to have CY, CX, and MC. And now, in the second step, if you write the equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram, we will be able to determine these support reactions. So in the x direction, if you write sigma of x equal to zero in this direction, we have negative cx plus zero is equal to zero. So cx will be equal to zero. Now in the y direction, we have a point load at point A, another point load at point C, and a distributed load from point B to point C. So before writing the equation of equilibrium in the y direction, we are going to substitute this triangular load with a single resultant force. We know the magnitude of the single resultant force will be the area of our distributed load, or 6 feet multiplied by 2 kilopounds per foot divided by 2 which will give you a magnitude of 6 kilopounds, and this single resultant force will be applied at the centroid of our triangle, or the distance 6 feet divided by 3, or 2 feet from the larger end of the load. So this free body diagram can be substituted by this one here. So now in the y direction, if you write sigma fy equal to 0 in this direction, we have negative 1 minus 6, plus CY is equal to zero. This will give us a CY equal to seven kilopounds. And finally, by taking the moments around any point along the beam, we can determine this MC. I'm gonna choose this point A. So if you write sigma MA is equal to zero in this direction, we're gonna have five plus this six multiplied by this distance or eight feet minus CY or 7 kilopounds multiplied by this distance or 10 feet plus MC is equal to zero. This will give us an MC equal to 17 kilopounds foot. So in the second step, we determine that CX is equal to zero, CY is equal to 7 kilopounds, and MC is equal to 17 kilopounds foot. And now in the third step, we should cut the beam at different sections and draw the free body diagrams for each segment of each section. So we have two sections here. Our first cut section will be somewhere between point A and B, or X between 0 to 4 feet. So the cut section will look like this. And the second cut section will be between point B and C, or X between 4 to 10 feet. So the second cut section will look something like this. And now for each cut section, we're going to have two cut segments. So for the first cut section, this is our left cut segment, 
and this is our right cut segment. For the second cut section, this is our left cut segment, and this is our right cut segment. So for cut section number one, or x between zero to four, this is our left cut segment, and its free body diagram will look like this. So we cut the beam at a distance x from the left end, and x is between zero to four. We have a downward shear force, which we call V1x, and we have a counterclockwise moment, which we call M1x. So this will be the free body diagram for the left segment of the first cut section, which was between zero to four. And now for the same cut section, our right cut segment will look like this. So we cut the beam at a distance x from the left end. The total length of the beam was 10 feet. So the length of this cut segment will be 10 minus x. So this is 10 minus x. 10 minus x minus 6 will be 4 minus x. We have an upward shear force, which we call V1x. And we have a clockwise moment, which we call M1x. Now, one thing to remember is that when you cut the beam, if you're drawing the free body diagram for the left cut segment, the positive sign for your shear force is going to be in the downward direction. And for the moment, the positive sign is when your moment is acting counterclockwise. And if you're analyzing the right cut segment, the positive sign for your shear force is in the upward direction. And for your moment is in clockwise direction. All right, now let's draw the free body diagram for the two cut segments of this cut section. So the second cut section is somewhere between four to 10. Our left cut segment will look like this. So we cut the beam at a distance x from the left end. This is gonna be x. x minus four will be the length of this piece. We have a downward shear force, which we call V2x. We have a counterclockwise moment, which we call M2x. And for the right cut segment, we're gonna have something like this. I'm just gonna move it here. Again, the total length of the beam was 10 feet. We cut the beam at a distance x from the left end. So the length of this segment will be 10 minus x. We have a V2x upward and an M2x clockwise. So again, in the third step, we cut the beam at different sections and draw the free body diagrams for each segment of each cut section. And now in the next step, for each cut section, we should write the equations of equilibrium for any of the two cut segments and determine the corresponding V and M for that cut section. So for cut section one, if we write the equations of equilibrium for this cut segment, we will be able to determine V1 and M1, or we can write the equations of equilibrium for this cut segment and determine V1 and M1. You're gonna get the same results no matter which cut segment you choose, but I personally prefer to analyze this one because it seems to be a lot easier to analyze than this one. And for cut section two, if we write the equations of equilibrium for this cut segment, we will be able to determine V2 and M2, or we can write the equations of equilibrium for this cut segment and determine V2 and M2. And again, the results are gonna be the same. If you choose this cut segment, you have a point load, a moment, and a triangular load. And if you choose this one, Again, you have a point load, you have a moment, but you have a trapezoidal load. So I feel that this one is probably easier to analyze, but you can analyze this one. So I'm just gonna copy these diagrams. I'm gonna keep this one and this one here and remove these two other. Now for the first cut section, if you write sigma fy equal to zero in this direction, we have negative one minus V1 equal to zero. And this will give us a V1x equal to negative one kilopounds. So from X 
between 0 to 4, your shear force is going to be constant equal to negative 1. And now if we take the moments around any point along this free body diagram, we will be able to determine M1x. I'm going to choose this point O and write sigma MO is equal to 0 in this direction. So 1 multiplied by this distance or x plus m1 is equal to 0. This will give you an m1x equal to negative x. So again, this is the function for our bending moment for x between 0 to 4. For x between 4 to 10, since we have a distributed load here, again, we have to substitute it with a single resultant force. The magnitude of our resultant force will be the area under this triangle. We have this length, which is x minus 4, but we have to figure out the value of this magnitude here in order to determine this area. So if this is our total beam, again, we cut the beam at a distance x from the left end. x is between 4 to 10. The total length of our triangular load is 6 feet. The length of this piece is x minus 4. And the maximum magnitude of our triangular load is 2 kilopounds per foot. And now we want to determine the area under this triangle. Okay, let's keep this side and remove this part. Now, if we call this height Wx, let's remove this. This area here will be Wx multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 2. Now, we know the slope of this total triangle is going to be 2 divided by 6. And we know the slope of this triangle is equal to the slope of this total triangle. So Wx divided by x minus 4 will be equal to 2 divided by 6. And this will give you a Wx equal to x minus 4 divided by 3. So this small triangle here has a height of x minus 4 divided by 3. And this length is also x minus 4. So the area will be x minus 4 multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 3 divided by 2. So that will be the magnitude of our single resultant force, which will be applied at a distance one third of this total length, where x minus 4 divided by 3 from the large end. So this distance is also x minus 4 divided by 3. And this magnitude was x minus 4 to the power of 2 divided by 6. So again, the magnitude of our resultant force is the area under the triangle, where x minus 4 multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 3 divided by 2, which will be x minus 4 in the power of 2 divided by 6, and it will be applied at a distance x minus 4 divided by 3 from the large end. And now we can substitute this free body diagram with this one here. Now if we write sigma fy equal to 0 in this direction, we have negative 1 minus x minus 4 in the power of 2 divided by 6 minus v2 equal to 0. So this will give us a v2x equal to negative 1 minus x minus 4 in a power of 2 divided by 6. And if we simplify this expression, we will get this one here for v2x. So our v2x will be equal to negative x in a power of 2 divided by 6 plus 4x divided by 3 minus 11 divided by 3. I'm just going to remove this one. For the moments, if we take the moments around any point along this free body diagram, we will be able to determine m2. So I'm just going to choose this point O and write sigma mo equal to 0 this direction. So 1 multiplied by x minus 5 plus this force multiplied by this distance where x minus 4 in the power of 2 divided by 6 multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 3 
plus this M2 is equal to zero. So your M2x will be equal to minus x plus five minus x minus four in the power of two divided by six multiplied by x minus four divided by three. And again, if you simplify this expression, you'll get this expression here. So your M2x will be equal to negative x in the power of three divided by 18 plus two x in the power of two divided by three minus 11 x divided by three plus 77 divided by nine. Just gonna remove this one, move this here. So these are your shear force and bending moment. For the second cut section, we're x between four to 10. And now we can summarize our results by these functions here. All right, now let's draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for our beam using these expressions. Okay, for the shear force at x equal to zero, or point A, you have a negative one kilopound point load. So we have to go down. This is negative one from zero to four the shear force is constant. From four to 10, the shear force function is a quadratic function. And if you draw this function, it will look something like this. So the magnitude of the shear force at x equal to 9.999999, or a value slightly smaller than 10, it'd be around negative seven. So this is negative seven here. And then at x equal to 10 or point C, you have a positive shear force equal to seven. So positive seven plus negative seven will bring you back to shear force equal to zero. So this is how your shear force diagram will look like for this beam. For the moment, we don't have any moments at this end of the beam. So we're gonna start at point zero. From zero to four, we have a linear function. So if we draw this function, it will look something like this. And this value is negative four. At x equal to four, we have a clockwise or positive moment with a magnitude of five. So negative four plus positive five will bring you to moment equal to one. So this is one here. And now from four to 10, we have this cubic function, and if we draw this function, we will have something like this. So at x equal to 9.999999, where a value slightly smaller than 10, the magnitude of your moment will be equal to negative 17. And here you have a clockwise or positive moment equal to 17. So positive 17 plus negative 17 will bring you back moment equal to zero. Now, by looking at this diagram, you can see that at this point here, your moment is equal to zero. So somewhere between four to 10, you will have a moment equal to zero. So if you put this second expression equal to zero, you will get an X approximately equal to 4.95. So this X here is approximately equal to 4.95. And these are how your shear force and bending moment diagrams will look like for this cantilever beam. I also plotted both of these diagrams using MATLAB, just to show you how the more accurate versions of these diagrams will look like in computer programs. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you like this video, please press the like button. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, feel free to write for us in the comment section. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks again and see you in the next videos.